Japan, wow, what a country. I see two parts to this culture, the business and the traditional and the free-spirited. The business and traditional are very well groomed, dressed in tailored suits with shiny black shoes. There isn't a shabby suit in sight. Even in the evening, they still look sharp and clean. Young men are a beautiful example of gentlemen. The older are so refined, they look like diplomats. The women are so elegant, so refined, a perfect examples of a lady. Just stunning to see, just so eloquent. The fashion free spirits, well this is a complete contrast. Everything goes, I mean anything goes. I've had my eye on fashion most of my life and I've never experienced this sense of styling. Let me tell you, I absolutely love it. It's so free, no one judges or looks twice. These people are the coolest confident people I have ever seen in any of my travels. Where I'm from, if I hold a stick, wear a hat or a simple scarf, people will look at and think, this guy is peculiar. It's based on us being conformist. The perception is we are the free spirited ones and the Japanese are the strict. Where in Japan, they don't conform and they are not judgmental. This is based on my own observations, not any national statistics. Even in this metropolis of madness, people young and old maintain a friendly and kind and polite nature. They are always courteous and offer assistance if needed. There is not a bit of graffiti nor vandalism anywhere. The trains are spotless. They have signs and advertising, perfectly positioned, even posters hung from the top. I thought if they were back in Australia, they wouldn't last two minutes. If you can't handle the pace of busy train stations or cities, avoid being or staying in any of the cities in Japan. They are all seriously busy. It can be overwhelming. The trains are the main form of transport. The taxis are very expensive. The train system is beyond comprehension. It's just a never ending loop of tracks intertwined under and over and in between the cities. It's just absolutely amazing. So you wonder why. Everybody obeys the laws. Even when thousands of people are waiting to cross the street, no one jaywalks, not even one person. You feel very odd if here if you did jaywalk or litter. Japan ranks as having one of the lowest robbery rates in the world. I believe this is due to the respect they have for each other and themselves. There is no racism required here because due to non-existent multiculturalism. Everyone here is Japanese besides a few tourists and a few Turkish street vendors selling kebabs. You can smoke pretty much in any restaurant or bar, however, you can't smoke on the streets or train stations or etc. There are designated areas on the streets where you can smoke. English isn't widely spoken. Communication will be difficult most of the times. Japanese love drinking beer, morning, noon and night. Typical Asian Japanese food everywhere. Then you'll see the Western typical franchises that are very popular. If you're a vegan, you will struggle. They must have a sweet tooth here because the dessert restaurants are probably as equal to the food restaurants. There are so many dessert restaurants, it's crazy. They are a vending machine culture. There are vending machines everywhere, in the main streets, back streets, stations. Man, everywhere you look, there is a row of vending machines. Coins are part of their currency. And now I know why. You hardly see anyone use credit cards. Everyone pays in cash. Okay, my summary, I would come back for a trip. However, it's not on my short list of places to visit next. What I did learn from this trip, you can be busy and you can still be kind and polite. You do not need to conform to others. That's your choice. Be true to yourself because no one else will do a better job than you. Signing off, love from Japan, arigato. Thank you, bye.